G'day guys, today we're talking about the cost of living in Thailand. How much does it cost to live month to month? What can you expect? What's gonna be your biggest expenses? And why it's probably a lot cheaper than what you'd firstly imagine. G'day, I'm Flynn from Offshore in Asia. We help people move, do business, and invest in Southeast Asia. You'll hear a lot of people talk about that kind of $1,000, can you live on a $1,000 mark, which is a stupid question, to put it frankly, because most Thais live well under that. So nevertheless, we're kind of going with that theme as that's what most people seem to do. Short answer is yes, you can, depending on where you are in the country and your lifestyle and other expenses that you may or may not have. But We'll cover that in detail through this video and why it's probably much more achievable than you might imagine. There's a couple assumptions with this video. Firstly, that you're either single or a couple living together, assuming you're fairly new to Thailand, that you're going to be renting a property as opposed to purchasing or staying in hotels day to day. The first big expense for most people's accommodation. This is a pretty obvious one. I think this is the biggest expense for most people wherever they are in the world. Really, you just want to be looking at a long-term lease. That's going to be by far the cheapest option for pretty much everyone. Month to month is going to be far cheaper than day to day. The place I was staying in Chiang Mai last year was charging 450 baht per night and 4,000 per month. So it's about a 70% saving on the monthly rate as opposed to the nightly rate. Where you stay is also a big factor. In each location, the central location is going to be a bit more, although I don't think this is as much as Western countries where if you're right in the middle of town in Australia, most places are really expensive and just 10 minutes out of town is a lot cheaper. Thailand, it tends to be pretty good value wherever you are, although this still applies to an extent. Another thing is just the term of lease, as I've kind of touched on before, like you really want to find a place that you like and stay there for a longer term and get that six, 12 month contract. Even month to month's a pretty good deal, really. Another factor is where you're staying in the country. Places like Bangkok, Phuket, and a few of the other more touristy islands down south are considerably more expensive than the more regional capitals like Chiang Mai, Kanchanaburi, Hua Hin. Food's a big expense too. For me, it's my biggest expense because I have quite a cheap apartment. Realistically, you want to be eating Thai food if you want to be saving money. Local food's far cheaper than Western food and a lot nicer to be frank when in Rome, really. As far as where to get food, go to the markets, go to the street stalls. I just go to the local restaurants and get food made to order because it's so cheap. You're paying maybe a dollar, max $2 a meal. Transportation's your next big one and this is where it starts to get a bit more hairy because it can vary a lot between different expenses. For food and accommodation, you can get each as low as maybe 200 a month. Whereas for transportation, you're gonna be looking at about 100 bucks a month if you're renting a motorbike, and it, less than that if you're just going by grabs and song towels everywhere. Song towels are a little jeepney as you'll hear them called in other parts of Southeast Asia. It's like a, a ride share pickup truck. If you're getting a motorbike, make sure that you get a driver's license. You can get this in Thailand, because if not, you're gonna be paying that 500 baht fine when every time the police pulls you over, the next big cost is your visa, and this varies between which one you have. If you have an elite visa, say the five or 10 year option, you might be paying around $9 per day when you average it out over that time. Whereas if you're a tourist in there for a month or two, you could be paying nothing. For most people, about $100 a month if you're on the standard, say, education visa, which a lot of people under 50 are in Thailand. Retirement visa is cheaper than that because there's obviously no classes, so you don't have to pay for them as well. I personally factor in $90 a month if you're getting an education visa. Otherwise, you're going to be looking a lot lower than that. This isn't factoring in if you have a visa agent though, because the visa agent obviously is an added fee on top of this. Many people find it worthwhile because of the hellish paperwork and the wait times in Thai immigration. Then comes the miscellaneous expenses. These can be as high or as low as you really want or need because the things like medication or gym memberships or classes and insurance and all these things that you're going to have to be factoring in that it's kind of hard for me to put into a video. But to give you an idea, I went to a dentist and that was about 20 US dollars for a full clean of my teeth. Dermatologist is about $10 just to get a few little things looked at in your skin if you have any issues there. Medications, very cheap in Thailand. I can't speak for prescription medicine, so I don't require any and I haven't really dealt with anyone who has. However, going to a pharmacist over the counter medication is very affordable and the pharmacists are usually highly knowledgeable and generally speak English. The other annoying miscellaneous expense that you can almost completely eliminate is bank fees. If you have a foreign card, every single transaction in Thailand where you withdraw money from an ATM is gonna cost you about seven US dollars or 220 Thai baht. And this tends to go up every couple of years. By the time you see this, that might've even increased. To get around this, we recommend getting a Thai bank account. It's simple enough if you know where to look. The challenge is that not every bank and not every branch allows foreigners to open accounts, but find one that does. And it only costs about 1500 baht to do so. 
and it is so worth the effort because it pays for itself very, very quickly. I touched on it before, insurance is another one and just, you, just trust me, have insurance. There's so many situations I've encountered where people don't have it and not so much Thailand, but in other countries in Southeast Asia, they can even be refused access to a hospital without it. Again, this varies. For me, it's about $45 a month, but it can be as little or as high as you want, not depending on the level of coverage and what country you're from. So when I just factor in these costs, my monthly expense is about $700. On top of this subtotal, I also do Muay Thai and go to a co-working space, and they cost about $130 and $100 respectively. I did touch on it previously, but location plays a huge factor into cost of living in Thailand. Bangkok is much more expensive than the rest of the country. If you're in Isan, the northeast, or in the north of Thailand, your cost of living is gonna be much lower. I figured out roughly that my $930 a month cost of living would be about 12 to 1300 in Bangkok or Phuket. And that's an approximation. It depends on your lifestyle and what you're doing. Obviously, that's gonna be more or less depending on where you are. If you're looking to save money on where you live, the north and northeast are great options. But really, if you want to find somewhere cheap, you can do that in most places. I've even found Koh Phang Yan in the south to be fairly good value. If I was to recommend a few places, firstly, Chiang Mai, I wouldn't go past it. If you're new to Thailand, looking to spend some time in it and see if you like it or not, Chiang Mai is just a great bet. Unless you want the beach or the big city and that's has to south or Bangkok's a better choice. Chiang Mai is great. Super low cost of living, great lifestyle. You're right near the mountains. There's plenty of other places to explore just out of the town. And it's got a nice mix of small town and like busier city vibes. Kanchanaburi is also great. I haven't been there, but Aaron has, and all the expats we know who hang out there love it. They say similar things about it as they do Chiang Mai, but it's really close to Bangkok. It's a bit more connected to the outside world in that sense if you're traveling back and forth quite a lot. If you want an island, Koh Phangan seems to be a great option. It's right near Koh Samui, so it's pretty easy to get to and from. However, if you're traveling all the time, it's gonna be a little bit more of a hassle in saying that there's lots to do on the island. It's got a nice mix of laid back little hippie towns, bit busier sort of party areas, and there's quite a nice alternative scene there as well. So whatever you're looking for, you're gonna find it there. And you obviously have the monthly full moon party, which the island gets super busy. So if that's not for you, probably head to the north of the island. So the last one is Nakhon Phanom. This one's located in Isan or Northeast Thailand. It's the most culturally different, one of the lowest socioeconomic areas of Thailand. However, it's on the Mekong River and it's a beautiful, quiet town. Not many tourists go there. For what reason? I think it's just lack of connectivity. However, if you want to go there to really chill out and really stretch out your budget, it's a great place to go. Awesome culture, super low cost of living, great food, and you get mountain views across the river into Laos. Thailand's as affordable or as expensive as you want it to be. There's a lot of people who really can spend their money there and that's to say the least. However, a lot of people, if you want, can really stretch your money out. Depending on your lifestyle, thousand US dollars a month really is achievable. I'm spending a bit under that at the moment and I'm not missing out at all. It really comes down to what you want. If you like Thai food, if you want to live a more local lifestyle, you can do it easily on a thousand a month. However, if you're going to be a bit more cosmopolitan, if you're going to be hanging around bars or the city all the time and traveling inside the country a lot, it's going to be a bit more difficult. If you aren't in Thailand yet, you can predict all this stuff before you get there anyway. You can at least get a pretty good idea of what you're going to spend. Most of us know our spending habits pretty well and you can budget a lot of this in. If you want to know more about cost of living, have a read of a few of our articles. We really break down cost of living within areas of each city and within the regions of Thailand and make it a lot easier for people to really understand and get a better idea of their budget before they even get there.